Hello again, and it's time for another project. A nice simple plaque today. On this bit of scrap, 17 inch by 6 inch, fence panelling, fence board, fence picket wood. Now it's quite rough when it turns up, so you will need to take a little time just sanding it down and getting it somewhere near. Okay, we've got our template we're putting on today, the Garden of Kelvert. And some nice plums on the side. Now the best way for me to transfer this, as always, is to lay out your template, your pattern, and pop your carbon paper underneath like so. And simply draw around that with a pencil. Remove your carbon. And you've got your image there. And we're basically good to go. Now if you're really clever, you could glue that straight onto the piece of wood and route over the top of the paper. I've tried this and it just makes too much mess and it's too much like hard work. So that's obviously all been done. You can see what we've got to route out today, route out today. Let's look at our bits and see what we're going to need. As always, I like to use these CNC bits these are available off eBay, Amazon. They're really cheap, but they are fantastic. They're like little pins, and they're ideal for cutting round the lining of the, where the pencil's been to start it off with first. They do come with a small shaft, so you will require what they call a collet, and that's simply just a little tube like that, which the CNC bit slots in, and then now that's got a quarter inch shaft and that will quite easily fit into your router and you're good to go. What I'll use this for, like I've just said, I'll go around all the pencil marks of what we're going to remove. And then we'll put on a bigger piece, a one eighth bit. Like so. And basically go on the inside of the lettering, we're going to take out inset lettering this is called. So we're going to remove all the inner. If you're taking out the outer area, that will be outset. So we're going to remove all the inside of these letters today and the plums. Paint some nice black paint in there. Give it a nice final sanding down and hopefully we've got something like a black. Okay, let's set up the router. Throw our little CNC bit in. And we're good to go. Okay, you can see from that we've gone round all our lettering with our little CNC bit. Don't be concerned about getting it perfect because we're going to go around with the Dremel bit of sandpaper and give it a general tidy up. So any mistakes that you think you've made along the way, you can soon sort them out with a bit of sanding down. I always make a slightly bigger gap like this one. That allows you like what I call my depth charger. So when I put in the 1 8 bit, we can set it to the same depth as that. And we know it's going to be the same all the way around and then bits should pop out no problem. I'm going to have to use a quarter inch 1 8 because it's the smallest piece that literally would just fit inside this lettering. 
And like I said before, because we've gone down either side with our CNC bit, this all should pop out fairly easy without taking any of the wood that we don't want to take with it. Okay, let's pop this on and we'll remove the inset wood on these letters. Right, we've gone all the way around with our one eighth bit. We've had no issues, nothing's dropped off. Everything's still in place. And that's always a good sign. What I will do now is just gently go around with my Dremel. Just a general tidy up, just to get these bits off. I tend to use engraving bits. This has got a nice flat surface on, and it's also got the abrasive stuff underneath and that just goes in there nicely just to go around like so and give it a general tidy up and then we'll put on our black paint okay we've cleaned up the best we can we've gone inside everything's still intact now it's time to put a bit of painting on all the lettering will be done in black. We'll do a couple of bits of green on three leaves we have there. And some kind of plum colour for the three plums. And a bit of brown in the branches. Uh, just before we do that, with this wood being quite porous. And I have used it before. And I'm not having any issues. But it might just pay you to take a couple of seconds and spray some kind of sealant. There is a wood sealant that you can use. I've never tried that. Any kind of varnish or spray and it just say there that it seals and we're going to give it a quick coating over nothing too fantastic because this will all be sanded off again eventually and all it's going to do is hopefully seal the pores of the fibers there that we've cut into and when we put our paint on it'll stop it bleeding into the side walls and making a mess of your straight lines so for sake of a couple of seconds basically just Spray it on like so. I'll go over it a little bit more off camera and that will seal those side walls like I said and hopefully cut back on any paint bleeding. Right, let's go and get some paint sorted. Right, you can see that's all nicely dry now. So we're going to start putting our paint on. For this one I'm going to use Painter's Touch. These are great little paints for indoor and outdoor. So we'll throw our black on first and then we'll fill in the rest. Okay, it's just a simple case of throwing it in like so. We don't have to be too fantastic about it because we're going to sand it over it all at the end. So just get your black in there like so. I'll come back once it's all done 
and we'll see what we've ended up with. Right, you can see from that, all the painting's done. We've got some kind of plum effect going on there. The only mistake I did make, and it's a lesson learnt, was to spray this polyurethane finish as a sealant to stop the bleed. It sealed it just a little bit too good, to be honest, and the paint wouldn't stick on at all. So I've had to go over this about six times, and it's left that glossy shine on it. So I know for next time, it'll be ideal to finish it with, but not for sealing with in my eyes. I found my empty container. This is the one I would normally use. And that's spot on, quick spray with that. This one, not so clever. So we'll know for next time. Anyway, let's sand this down now and see what we've ended up with. Right, you can see from that it's all brushed down nice and clear. No dramatics. Normally I'd put linseed on this, but I'm going to use this spray no matter what. So I'm just going to spray over some of this polyurethane just to seal it. Remember, this is a fence panel, so it's already been treated, pressurized, tunnelized with chemicals. So just make sure you've got your mask on when you're carving this on, because there could be all sorts of stuff coming out of it. So yeah, we'll spray it down now. Just basically, same thing again. Just to darken it down slightly. And I'll do this three or four times, give it a bit of a coating. And then we'll come back when this project's finished. Okay, you can see from that, we're all finished. We sprayed on our lacquer, polyurethane. Give it a nice little shine. Remember, this is only on scrap wood, fencing boards, so no expense as regards to the materials. I'm not too sure about this polyurethane, to be honest. That's a matte finish, so I've messed up picking that one. So I basically went over with some clear lacquer, and that's definitely gave it a better shine and a better finish, as you can see. And there you have it then. One routed out plaque, gate sign on uh, fence panel wood 17 inch by 6, thank you for watching